Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. And in this video, I want to talk about alternative insulation materials and why I don't recommend that you use them. I get a question like this all the time, people sending me links to some obscure <laughs> insulation material made from, I don't know, lizard hide. Obviously, I'm exaggerating here, but uh, I get some form of question like this all the time asking me whether this is a, a viable material to use in their absorbers, in their base traps, often made from hemp or recycled jeans or some sort of wood fiber. There are all sorts of alternative products out there that could potentially work in our base traps and DIY absorbers. But my answer is always the same. If you want reliable results, stick to stone wool or fiberglass products, right? Mineral wool insul insulation material is my recommendation what you should use and plan with for your DIY base traps and absorbers. But I haven't talked about this in any detail on my YouTube channel yet, so that's what this video is for. I'm gonna go through why exactly that is my decision and my recommendation. But before I do that, if you're actually thinking about buying your own base traps, building your own base traps, and you're still quite unsure about what the right approach is for your room, I want you to check out my complete guide to base traps and base trapping, which you can get for free at the link in the description. It's kind of an encyclopedia of all the different types of base traps out there, both off the shelf and DIY. So obviously all types of insulation material, base traps, but also resonance traps, membrane traps, tube traps, active traps, combined traps. It's all in there laid out for you so you understand, first of all, how they work, but also what it is you're looking at if you're actually looking at different types of designs online, how to use them in your room, how many you would need for them to be effective. It's all condensed down to make it as easy and efficient as possible for you to make a decision about what is the right type of approach for your room. So if you want help figuring out what type of base traps is right for you, make sure you download my complete guide to base traps and base trapping for free at the link in the description. All right, so alternative insulation materials for your base traps. Why don't I recommend them? Let me get this out of the way first. My recommendation isn't based on just personal taste or some sort of ideology or some other type of conviction. If there was some sort of alternative insulation material out there that, first of all, would be available to everybody and also would reliably work as intended, I would totally recommend it. I'm all for less environmental impact. And I'm not saying either that there aren't products out there that work for what we want to use them for, for our absorbers and base traps. Some of these products have shown to work really, really well. Instead, my recommendation is really based on just looking at the facts and then making a decision based on what works best for most people. So I'm basically looking at three different aspects. Accessibility, so is this product even available where you are? Then reliability, does it work as intended or can I guarantee that it works as intended? And then price, right? The fact of the matter is that most of us DIY home studio people don't intend to invest thousands and thousands into our studios. We're very price conscious. And a lot of the emphasis, a lot of our priorities are on keeping things as cheap as possible. So let's talk about this accessibility aspect first, right? And simply said, most of the products out there that are available across the planet are based on mineral wool, so stone wool or fiberglass. So I get people asking me to give a qualified recommendation when they're based in Singapore or Taiwan or Peru or Switzerland. So I can't really say get this particular type of hemp, which is only available in these states in the United States, 
when you're living halfway across the planet. You know, that's just not a viable recommendation. Right? So this accessibility aspect is important. You need to be able to actually purchase the product without turning the world upside down. So the next factor here is reliability. Obviously, if I make a recommendation, I actually need to know that this is going to work or at least within certain limits. And that's really the defining aspect to all of this. There are so many variables in how these insulation materials are cooked together, if you will, that the tolerances of how effective they are are very, very wide. And then obviously most of these products are made to insulate buildings. They're not made for acoustic purposes. And so the data that we need to determine whether they actually work is often either difficult to find or sometimes impossible to find. So we're using products that are poorly defined as is and also manufactured with really high tolerances. And considering those aspects, it's hard to say use a certain category of product when the data isn't there to have any reliable means of saying if it's actually going to work. Now, because mineral wool products, stone wool and fiberglass, are so widespread for this particular purpose, there's more data available to analyze. And that gives us the option to find certain patterns in that data that make this decision process easier, more reliable, right? And so that's why I can focus on these products and say with some confidence that they're actually going to work if you watch out for these particular metrics. And that's just not the case with alternative products because oftentimes, again, there isn't any reliable or even just relevant data available to make a decision and say if this is actually going to work. So the next factor is price. Yeah, simply put, again, because mineral products are so widespread, they tend to be cheaper than alternative insulation material products. Yeah, so for us price-conscious DIYers, money is a large decision factor. And when we're faced with paying twice as much for a certain type of insulation material, most of us will make the decision to stick to the cheaper option. It's as simple as that. Now, one factor I haven't spoken about yet, and you probably are wondering why, is the whole health aspect, right? So people are concerned about whether these materials are somehow impacting their health negatively, and that's why they would want to use alternative or eco-friendly products, health-conscious products for the insulation material in their base traps. The thing is, as much as people talk about this and throw stories around, unfortunately, this is all fear-mongering. There is no science to back up that these materials are a health hazard. And I've made a whole video about this that you can check out in the link now. The point is that unless you stick this material right across your mouth and breathe through it, you're not going to have any issues. Now, obviously, I'm exaggerating here, but basically mineral wool products are no risk to your health unless you inhale the fibers directly over a very long period of time. All right. So the worst case scenario here is that you basically place your panels right across the outlet of your AC. Yeah, so that airflow pushes through this, this material constantly. And then over a long period of time, several months, you're in this room b inhaling the fibers. That's when it might become a problem. But it should be obvious that that's not something you want to do. Yeah. On the other hand, if you put them in your base traps, if they're basically stationary in there, there's no constant airflow through them. If there's fabric covering them, that basically reduces the fiber flight to zero. You're not inhaling the stuff. It is no problem. If you want to be extra safe, you can wrap the entire insulation core in a thin sheet of plastic. And by the way, I go through how to make this work properly in my course, Build a Better Base Trap. So check that out if you want more details. Yeah, But basically, the health aspect is no argument 
in this uh, in this question of making a decision for or against alternative insulation materials because the, there is no health hazard with your standard standard mineral wool products. So if you're looking at alternative insulation material products to put into your base traps or absorbers, just know that it won't do anything for you from a health perspective, but it is riskier in terms of working well and it is definitely more expensive. For most people, sticking to mineral wool is the best option and in many cases, even the only option. All right, so with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.